All right, now let's prepare our, our dwarf signals. We're gonna make this. You can buy these on Amazon. What you get is for $9.99, you get 10 of these dwarf signals. They come with the actual housing, a green LED, a red LED, and a resistor. All you gotta do is search for this product ID. Uh, just put that in the, um, the search field on Amazon and these will come up. Uh, I don't know if you know this, but on Amazon you can search for any product by its ID name, ID number, and it'll come up. Just an easy way to share products. Uh, so let's set that aside. I need to make two of these. I've already made one. Uh, this is my prototype. Uh, these don't come with a, a backing. That's their only down flaw. Um, so what I did is I took a little bit of um, hot glue and just melted it onto the back and then I painted it. Uh, so let's get started. Um, these dwarf switches, uh, what they're gonna do is they're gonna be set on the track. I'm gonna put one on each side of my, my turnout to indicate which which way the track is switched. Uh, if it's switched to the left, the dwarf switch on the left will be green, and the dwarf switch on the right will be red. If it's switched the other way, those will reverse. Um, these are going to be hooked up to my 12 volt DC bus, not DCC. Um, so we do need a resistor. Uh, if we hooked these LEDs right up to the 12 volts, uh, they would burn out immediately. Uh, let me just do an example of the wiring layout that, uh, that I'm gonna do here. We use red for positive. Okay. I'm gonna use black for negative. Black for negative. Okay. This is the resistor that came with them. Now for the two LEDs, I'm only gonna use one resistor. So for one, though I'm gonna hook it up to the positive side and for the other one hook it up to the negative side and so there's a reason for that because as you know when the LEDs are hooked up backwards they won't light up so we're gonna be reversing the polarity and when we reverse the polarity one will light up the other won't the polarity the other direction, the opposite one will light up, the other one won't. Now let's take the other end of the resistor, hook it up to our positive, and then this end, hook it up to our negative. So that one lights up and this one will not. I'm gonna, here is my uh, test power pack. I'm gonna reverse, I don't have just a switch to reverse the polarity, so I have to move them manually. I'm gonna switch these to the opposite ends and you'll see what happens. now the red LED lit up so that's the basic wiring concept that's what we're gonna do so I'll take all this apart and uh, we'll start soldering things together now in railroading versus when you're driving a car uh, for when you're driving a car you're gonna usually see your red light on top and your green light on the bottom, the yellow light in the center. Uh, but for railroading, they do it the opposite way, usually. 
So we're gonna try to make this a little bit authentic. We're gonna put the green light on the top and the red LED on the bottom. So let's do that. So I got my housing mounted into my helping hands. And on these LEDs, the longer wire is gonna be your positive, shorter wire is gonna be your negative. I actually went ahead and uh, bent the positive on both of mine just a little bit. So first of all, let's go ahead and slide the green LED into its housing. And let's put the red LED into its housing. But we're gonna put the positive on that side. The green one, I put the positive on that side. So there we go. Next thing we're gonna do is uh, we're gonna bend these down. Bend these leads down. <laughs> Pops out. And then they can make contact, but you don't want the positive and the negative. You don't want the two sides to make contact. In fact, once you get them bent down, put it aside a little bit like that. But the two LEDs can make contact. See how I've got that? Let me make sure this is still on camera. So. I think at this point, what I'm going to go ahead and do is put a little bit of a hot glue in there to hold that in place. Okay, now this is also going to help to secure these leads a little bit. And when that glue dries, you can kind of take an X-Acto knife and trim it up a little bit. Okay, let's trim that up a little bit. The last step we'll do is we'll just go ahead and paint. And we'll paint that black so that uh, it'll look halfway decent. So for now, let's move on. Okay. So now let's attach the uh, resistor. Um, it really doesn't matter which side you put the resistor on because obviously in this schematic, we've got a, both a positive and a negative on both sides. Um, but we do wanna trim it up a little bit on one end, kind of about there. Okay. So for this, I'm gonna need to do some adjustments here on my helping hands. So we're gonna solder right there. Also, I'll just note that on resistors, it doesn't matter which direction you have them facing either. Resistors, that doesn't matter. Now let's go ahead and attach a wire to the other end of the resistor. Trim it back a little. So it's done. And we're gonna attach a wire to that side. Also trim it back. Right. 
So now let's add a little bit of heat, sh uh, heat shrink tubing. This is gonna keep the two sides from making contact. Two LED, the two leads. For the other side, go a little bit bigger and put that on there. Let's test it just to make sure that when I put that heat shrink on there, I didn't cause a short circuit. Okay. Okay, so we're good. So we are good to put that heat shrink on. Gonna tin the end of these wires. Now let me grab the paint, and then we'll paint the back. Okay, so this is just a semi-gloss black. I could use flat black. Uh, doesn't matter. I just want it to be black. It's an enamel paint. I just happen to have a lot of it. I find that model railroaders tend to not like to use enamel on their layout. They like to use acrylic. But I have a lot of it, so I'm using it. That is finished clean up my desktop and I'll move on to the next part. Uh, I'm gonna put my indicator, my dwarf switches, I'm gonna put them here and here. Uh, to put it here, I'm gonna need to do a little bit of deconstruction and reconstruction. I need to add this piece of cork as a place where that dwarf can, can be mounted onto. Um, so let's start by uh, moving some of this ballast. Okay. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut a little piece to go, it's gonna go kind of at an angle like that. Then it's going to go like that. And then it's going to go right there. So let me drill out the hole for this dwarf switch. Gonna go right there. I take my dwarf switch and put it through the hole. So. All right, let me put a little glue in there. So I'm going to take a hair dryer to this and uh, help it along with the drying a little bit. Okay, let's drill the hole for the other side. Put a little glue in there. Now let's wire them up. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take and run two black wires all the way from the dwarf switches. I'll wire them together as one switch and then when, uh, so that they reverse polar polarity. Um, I'll, I'll show you underneath the table. And then I'm gonna take them, have that wire come out over here and I will hook it up the same way that I did 
the indicator switch. Under the table, let me get under there. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take, and so I gotta figure out which wire is which. Um, I'll have to uh, take some alligator clips to it and, and play to figure out how to wire these together. But ultimately I'm gonna have just one wire, a pair of wires coming off the two all the way to the switch panel. All right, so I got lucky and I got it right on the first try. Flip the switch. Now it's set to go straight and you can see the light on the right turn green and the one on the left turn red. I'll do it while it's actually on camera. Okay. Okay, so that is the intended way it's supposed to work.